So you are recording. Okay. Everybody hear me okay? Sound good? Okay. I don't have to yell throughout the room. Well, welcome today. My name is Roz Lehman. I'm the executive director for the Iowa Organic Association. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today for our annual meeting. This is my fifth annual meeting uh, since I've been with Iowa Organic Association, and I really look forward to this event every year. Um, I enjoy the opportunity to connect with new and familiar faces and for the opportunity to, so, to celebrate this organic movement. And I really, truly appreciate you all taking the time to come out here today. First, I'd like to recognize our board of directors and staff who are here with us today. So if you could please stand up, I'd like to recognize you. We have up here Margaret Smith. She is the board president. Kim Anderson, Sydney McCullough, Gary Huber, Jack Knight, he is our vice president. Linda Strum Flores, I Wen, and am I missing anyone? And then we have oh, Scott, I'm not Scott Osborne. And then we have Olga Redding, our outreach and education coordinator in the back of the room. And I'm sure most of you have interacted with Olga at one time or another. So thank you. Thank you all for standing up. I want to thank you for your time and commitment to Iowa's mission and to your work to advance the organic movement across Iowa. I have learned so much from all of you, and I'm excited to see what we can accomplish moving forward. And before I go a little bit further, you may have seen, you may have not seen, one of our board members, Kim Anderson from Brighton, has a blueberry farm. She brought blueberries with her today. They're frozen. Um, so if you are interested in taking some of those home with her, there are two different sizes of bags. You can talk to Kim or Steve and go ahead and take some of those home with you tonight. Um, they're amazing. Um, I also, next, I want to thank our sponsor. Okay. Next, I wanted to thank our sponsors, our members, our donors, grantors, and our greater organic community. We really couldn't do this work without your contributions and strong support. Um, this year, our sponsors grew from 23 to 27. And so as you can see, we have a broad, um, diverse group of people who are supporting Iowa Organic Association. I also want to thank our amazing presenters, Angela and Andy, for, take, for traveling to Marion tonight for this meeting and for sharing their wisdom and experiences with all of us. And so before I dive into my update, I wanted to mention a short survey that we'll be handing out before Dr. Nish speaks. And we appreciate your thoughts about tonight's program and also about issues or topics that you think that we should be prioritizing um, in our programs moving forward in the future. Please feel free to use the back side for additional comments or suggestions, and then just go ahead and leave them on the table and we'll pick those up when we're cleaning up at, at the end of the program. Um, so that's a little bit of housekeeping. Was there anything else? I think that might cover it all there. Um, quick run through of the agenda. I'm gonna speak, hopefully be done by four. I'm gonna push. Um, Angela will speak after me. We'll take an hour break around there to have our meal, talk a little bit more. It was so great seeing you guys all chatting together this um, before we started. And then we'll have Dr. Nish speak and then we'll wrap it up for the evening. So let's see. So organic for good health. The theme for this year's annual meeting is probably the common thread that brings most of us to the organic movement. This overall sense to revitalize, nurture, respect our interconnectedness. Whether it's regenerating, regenerating the farm, being mindful of the food we consume and how it's produced, but also how, our, how the land use practices and even how our purchases impact the climate, environment, economy, and other living beings. We are part of the organic movement, a true grassroots effort founded on the basic principles of good health, a harmonious balance of practices that prioritizes water, air, and carbon co conservation, reducing pollution, and enhancing biodiversity and our environment. Countries across the world and communities across the United States are increasingly turning to organic to take advantage of these widespread benefits. 
What was once a common practice 50 years ago and perhaps dismissed as a niche crunchy fringe even 20 years ago is now in vogue and the fastest growing organic agriculture sector in America with $63 billion in sales last year. But it's not just about the money. Farmers are choosing organic production despite the challenges, obstacles, and lack of support. Consumers are choosing organic produ um, products despite the, their cost. And we are choosing, and because we are choosing to invest in the health of our families, our communities, and our planet. The Iowa Organic Association is the voice for organic in Iowa. We are providing programs, resources, and support for our growing organic community. Together, we will continue to advance organic practices and philosophies to our farms and communities across the state. So I'm going to dive in and give you a little update on what we've been up to. So these next few slides will offer some insight into our organizational activities and priorities over the last year. Since 2018, our membership has grown steadily by 30% each year. We are a diverse community of farmers, gardeners, food and farm businesses, advocates and consumers who champion organic practices and products. We have grown to over 250 members, which represents about 20% of the certified organic operations in the state of Iowa, just for a little perspective. But we, had, we have an additional 5,000 organic supporters who we reach through a variety of our um, online networks. So within our community, we are strengthening key relationships with new partners and stakeholders to extend awareness about organic standards, practices, and resources to a broader audience. And this includes organic and tr um, transitioning farmers who are helping us deliver this information in, in our programs, in our events. And you'll hear a little bit more about that later too. We're also connecting with the USDA National Organic Program to deliver programs and services. Um, we've connected with the Iowa NRCS, FSA, um, Extension leadership and staff in the state. We're working with the Organic Agronomy Training Service. Some of you will know that by the name of OATS, an organization that is working to educate agronomists, ag consultants, and technical service providers about organic topics and resources. And we also um, have been connecting with a wide range of professors and students at nearly 20 of Iowa's colleges and universities over the last year. And finally, we connect and, and work with many of uh, Iowa and regional farming organizations. So with dogged persistence, we met and exceeded our fundraising goals for 2022. We are closing out the year on solvent ground. We are spending less than we earned this year and we're not having to utilize our assets. So for any of you coming from a small nonprofit can know how, how big of a success and how relieving that can feel to be able to plan for the next, the work that we have moving forward for the next year. Um, our this year's annual budget was around $150,000. A third of that, our income comes from sponsors, members, unsolicited donations, and pr um, program res registrations. 45% of our income this um, year came from the USDA through FSA, RMA, and the Rural Business Development. 10% came from state funding sources, and another 10% from private foundations. Our fundraising efforts are focused on developing programs and services that help fulfill Iowa's mission and meet the needs of Iowa's organic community. And those efforts include increasing technical expertise in the state, connecting farmers with organic resources such as other farmers, research, events, and agencies that can support organic transition and production, and also in identifying opportunities and partners where we can expand awareness and production across the state. We can't do this work on sponsorships and memberships alone. So we are very fortunate this year to have received grant support from a diverse group of funders to help us deliver organic programming over the next year. We're working with the Iowa NRCS to deliver an annual training to um, their lead, um, they're called team leads and they oversee um, four to five counties through the state. So once a year, we'll be leading a technical training with them to provide um, organic technical um, information, um, advice on resources that are available, really um, preparing them to be able to answer those phone calls that are coming in from farmers when, um, 
at least give them some basics to be able to address those questions. We're really ex excited about this relationship that's been growing with the Iowa NRCS. We also um, are working with the Iowa DNR Conservation um, Education Program, and that is the program where we are making presentations to Iowa colleges and universities. Um, we um, delivered, and I'll talk a little bit more about it, but we've been doing it for a year and we they have refunded us for another year to continue that programming. We have a grant with the USDA Risk Management Agency to deliver um, programming and resources that will help um, farmers reduce risk in organic transition, expansion, or diversification. And those programs would could look like um, weed and pest management, financial resources, production systems, um, different crop markets. So um, anything we're, we're developing webinars and field days for over the next year that could really help farmers reduce those risks through that funding. And finally, we had funding through Organic Valley to explore partners and opportunities to increase organic research in Iowa. So that's something that we're really excited about as well. Our member and sponsor appeals, grant proposals, and cooperative agreements are all critical resources that help us continue to expand organic in Iowa. Yeah. We hope you will see the value and the outcomes resulting from your contributions and that you will continue your support in 2023. So in 2022, we were really able to get back into the full swing of things. We delivered a full slate of programming, offering support and resources to encourage participation and success in the organic in, in organic production. Um, so to kind of recap, um, we had a winter webinar series uh, this winter in January and February. Um, we coordinated 10 webinars over um, over the last year, and we've reached over 1,000 viewers with these presentations. These webinars have been a great way for us to share new and emerging information with a wider audience, while also expanding our community and available resources to our community. These webinar presentations are ar archived on the IOA YouTube channel, and they can be viewed at your convenience. I wanted to give you kind of a quick sense of like what kind of topics that we went over of, um, over this last winter. Um, Dr. Nish was one of our presenters last winter with Food as Medicine. Um, we had Matt Miller talk about weed management. Eliz Dr. Elizabeth Freaky talked about economics and soil health systems. Um, Joe Langmeyer, uh, organic grass, milk, dairy farming. Chris Trump, tending to the microbial life of your soil. This is actually our highest viewed YouTube video with 511 people um, going out and taking a look at that information. We heard from Rodale an update on their um, farm systems trial. And then we had a range of webinars that addressed some of the NRCS and FSA programs and um, services that are available that could be useful to organic and transitioning producers. So funding from our 2022 sponsors and a cooperative agreement with the FSA to promote FSA programs and services that could be useful to organic and specialty crop producers helped us coordinate and deliver six field days this year, where we reached 120 participant, participants over the course of those events. So in these events, we uh, our field days, we uh, our first one, we went to Kelowna to Organic Greens with James Nisley, where we toured the microgreen facility. We saw production flow from uh, we saw production flow from production to packaging, and then we toured and discussed management of his cabbage, sweet potatoes, and butternut squash plots on his 13-acre farm. I just love sharing the diversity of James' operation. Um, he sells his grains and fields crops to about 40 wholesale customers in eastern and central Iowa, which include K through 12 schools. And as a mom, I can really appreciate um, him being able to connect in, in that arena and be able to provide those resources. Um, colleges and universities, natural food stores, as well as traditional retailers like hy -V. Um, we also visited Three Sisters Farm with Orchard Dial in Williams, Iowa, where this field day focused on organic transition production and showcasing Orchard's management of her diverse organic farm. And then the third picture is from the Auto Farm with Travis Auto, where we held a full day workshop in Cherokee with Dakota's Best Seed and the Northbourne Organic Crop Insurance 
For farmers, ag consultants, and others interested in learning about organic production, tools, and resources. We also visited Kelowna for a oats full day workshop to deliver a similar type of a program, but this one was focused on organic production and how tillage is used to protect and enhance the soil on organic field crop farms. Um, the next field day was with Christine Taliga Burton in Williamsburg, where she um, showcased and gave everyone a tour of her organic prairie farm and discussed um, their organic seed production business. Um, and her seeds can be found on Etsy. And if you go out onto our website, there's some links on our homepage from that field day that can take you to that information. And then finally, the other, the last field day was with Flolo um, at Lauren Steinlage's farm in West Union. Um, IOA sponsored their organic day of their field week where Lauren and his family showcase innovative and alternatives to traditional corn and soybean production as and um, demonstrating the value and benefits of regenerative and diverse farming systems. So that was a lot of fun to be able to get out on the farm and connect with different folks and see different practices. Um, the growing organic expertise. So this was the DNR, the Iowa DNR REAP um, conservation education funding that we received over the last year and moving forward in this year. Um, so with that funding, we are delivering organic presentations to students in colleges across Iowa who are taking classes in agriculture, conservation, and environmental studies to introduce the topic of organic and the many benefits it provides to the farm, environment, and community. In the fall, we presented in the classroom and in the spring toured an organic farm op operation. And for these presentations, um, Olga invites a farmer from the region to accompany her. And so she shares some information about NOP and certification. And then the farmers get to share about a little bit about their um, firsthand experience in organic production. So during the 21-22 school year, we visited 10 colleges and reached 560 students at DMAC, Iowa Central, University of Northern Iowa, Morningside, Drake University Ag Law, University of Iowa, Iowa State University, Upper Iowa University, Luther College, and NIAC. 90% of those student participants gained new knowledge about organic production and principles. 73% had little or no knowledge about the National Organic Program or anything organic related prior to our presentation. So we really feel like these presentations are providing good value and information to a broad group of students who really are the future and the next, the next generation to be working in the field, especially with our farmers. So um, our target audience, again, was agriculture, conservation, environmental studies. We reached 138 agricultural-focused students, 19 conservation, 84 in environmental studies, and then 30 in agronomy. We are so fortunate that the Iowa DNR REAP Conservation Education Board is funding this program for one more year, allowing us to reach new schools and develop new relationships with professors and students at those colleges. Olga has already met a new batch of colleges during the fall semester this year, and she'll soon be scheduling field visits for the spring semester. The feedback received after these classes, both in conversation and through program evaluations, continues to demonstrate that these presentations and field visits have been beneficial in increasing awareness about organic and making a lasting impact on many of these students. So this, this has been a really fun and um, as many, if you have a chance to talk with Olga, it's just, it's such a rewarding program to be able to be connecting with so many of these students and professors at the, at the university level. So we also attended, we do a considerable amount of outreach. Um, we attended six farm conferences and trade shows this year. Um, we'd like to make sure we're a visible presence um, among like-minded stakeholders, um, especially for those that are looking for organic folks. We um, provide organic resources. Um, it's a great place to make new connections, expand our network, and hopefully recruit new members to support the work of the organization. 
Additionally, we um, regularly share information about IOA programs and events and other organic related news through our e-news, our listserv, our social media and direct mail. Our me if you're a member, you'll, you'll get more of our direct mail. Um, you'll be on that, that piece of list. So that's another way that we send out our information. So if you're interested in, in getting any, if you're not on those lists, you can sign up to any of those modes of communication on our homepage of our website. So policy, um, federal support and funding for organic has increased significantly this year. As the USDA is focused on increasing options for farmers to process locally, sell locally, and adopt practices like organic that are both good for their businesses and the climate. IOA is a member of the Organic Farmers Association and the National Organic Coalition. And um, due to our smaller capacity, it's really hard for um, Olga and I to keep uh, up on what's happening at the national level. So as members of these organizations, we kind of follow their lead on what's happening on national issues. And so we'll share their information and action alerts with our members and supporters. I also have a seat on the OFA policy committee and participate regularly in um, the NOC coalition meetings. So organizations like OFA and NOC and the Organic Trade Association were successful last year in working with Congress to secure $20 million in pandemic funds to help transitioning and organic certified operations with business and education related expenses. So that was new funding. Additionally, at the end of 20, the, at the end of the 2022 appropriations process, the National Organic Program was increased from 18 million to 20 million. A boost of funding of 7.5 million for organic research through the Organic Transitions Program. This bill also increases funding for SARE, which was now um, up to $45 million. And then an additional $500,000 increase in funding for organic data initiative to expand organic data collection and analysis efforts within the Agricultural Marketing Service. So in addition to gains in 22 appropriations, the USDA also invested 300 million in new organic initiatives or a new organic transitions initiative. This new funding will provide comprehensive support for farmers to transition to organic production and to help build and strengthen organic markets for the organic industry. So this funding will help um, some of the key areas that I think I'd like to point out are this funding is really going to help um, increase NRCS technical uh, um, service on the ground. So I hope that we'll start to see um, folks having a, um, greater access to the, those um, organic information in their county offices. And as our relationship continues to develop with the Iowa NRCS office, we will continue to look for ways to support um, that work at the county level. Um, this. Funding will also go to prioritization of organic market development. So looking for to expand um, the organic product markets in addition to um, increasing farmers and producers to um, provide products for those markets. So the NOP has been reaching out to different farmer groups and farmer organizations over the last month to just get a sense of what that might look from from different perspectives. And then finally, TOP, the trans Transition to Organic Partnership Program, that's the acronym. It's on the ground, regionally based farmer training that will provide education and technical assistance on organic agronomy, certification, extension, conservation planning, business development and regulations. So IOA has been selected as one of the top partners for our region. Um, this funding is being, there are six regions that is, this funding is being broken out into. Um, and so we, we are, we're, we feel really proud that we kind of were picked as an Iowa representative to help um, deliver th these educational resources on the ground. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more at, at the, towards the end about some of the goals that I see for our organization that could be used with that funding. So we're really excited about all of those gains that occurred just in the last year. Um, the lobby day. This is the third year that IOA has met with the Iowa delegation, both the Senate and House, during OFA's lobby day to raise awareness and advocate for a range of organic issues. 
This year, the priorities we discussed was to restore and expand the organic certification cost share program. Um, during the pandemic, funds were cut for this program from 75% cost share down to 50% cost share. I mentioned the $20 million um, in pandemic funding um, early on on this slide. Um, some of that money went to fill that gap from those cuts from the organic certification program. We're hoping in the next farm bill that, that those funds will be brought back up to the historic levels, if not up to 100% reimbursement. So keep your ear out for more information on that. Um, we also talked about strength, um, the USDA rulemaking to protect organic integrity. If you're on our listserv, you saw some action alerts come over the last couple of months about the origin of livestock rule that is well over a decade in um, terms of farmers waiting for this rule to be finalized to help level the playing field in um, regards to animal welfare standards for organic um, farms, close some of the loopholes that are being taken advantage of by some of the larger operations. The comment period ended at the beginning of November, so we'll see how long it takes the USDA to um, make their decision to whether or not they're going to finalize this rule or back to the drawing board. We also discussed strengthening of organic enforcement, um, both in um, internationally as well as domestically. And then uh, we continue to hear more and more interest in organic as a climate solution. So I expect that we will have many opportunities moving forward to um, advance organic in that arena. There's a lot of buzz and discussion about recommendations for the next farm bill process that is underway. We will keep you informed of ways you can support organic interests in this process. So, Okay, I am really close to wrapping up. So looking ahead for 2023, we want to continue those education and outreach work, the existing education and outwork and build upon um, those past successes and hopefully expand that work. We are in the year to look at updating and reviewing our strategic plan. So that's kind of exciting. Um, you can find our strategic plan on our website under the about us section. Um, if you want to get a sense of kind of what we were looking to achieve over the last three years and, and if we've made it there. I think um, we've had some great achievements. Um, obviously we wanna continue the college outreach. And oh, so let me go back to the top funding. So through the end of this school year, we have funding for Olga to continue doing the growing organic expertise in Iowa colleges. But beyond that, we don't have funding for that program. And we see how valuable that work is. I mean, to be able to reach 500 students every single year and talk new students, new people coming into the program is just unprecedented in terms of um, anyone presenting organic information to these students. So it's kind of like we're scratching the surface, but um, hopefully opening their minds to, to other tools and resources available. So this top funding could be a revenue source to help us continue the, this programming for the long term, but we'll continue to look for other opportunities to continue that program as well. We'd love to be able to utilize some of that top funding to establish an organic technical service provider for the state, someone where farmers can pick up the phone and call IOA and get some, some direct answers to the questions they have about production, um, about challenges that they're having, about what it takes to transition. Just someone with that agronomic, um, agricultural background that could really be useful. Um, and we'll see that starting to um, increase within the NRCS, but I think there could be a lot of value for our organization kind of being the go-to for that information. And then another piece of that top funding that was really uh, focused on men farmer mentoring groups. So it'd be really great to see pockets of farmer groups around the state of Iowa, led by farmers, but supported by our organization to encourage other farmers to check out what this organic is all about or a great space to be able to um, network, bounce ideas, learn new practices, learn about new resources. So those three things um, are really, I think, new, new activities, initiative programs that I think that could make a big difference in providing the support that we need for the organic community in Iowa. And then, we want to continue to engage policy leaders at the federal and state level, um, working with our allies on common issues, um, 
to further advance organic in the state of Iowa. So, so, so I wanted to just end with organic is in the spotlight. It's the new cool kid on the block right now, which means as a community, we have a responsibility to educate, promote, and provide oversight and advocacy to ensure that the foundation and integrity of this farmer developed and driven program stays true to its roots for the good of the farm, the farmer, the environment, and a lasting legacy for future generations. So again, I wanna thank you so much for being here today, for your continued support. And, and I would just wanna to end to say, I am so excited to hear from our two keynote speakers and to hear from them about the value and importance of organic for good health. So I'm gonna take a pause. We have a couple bits of business, um, IOA business that we need to take care of um, before we move forward with Angela's presentation. So I'm gonna hand the mic over to Margaret and she is just going to share a little bit about the board role in case any of you are interested in joining us, um, don't hesitate to reach out to a board member or myself to find out more about that. And then we have some new terms. Um, we have some renewals for board member terms that we need to take board action on. So thank you all for taking the time to listen to me. And here you go, Margaret. Thank you. Many of you heard, have here have served on volunteer boards. And so you know, in general, how we operate. Um, our, our terms are three-year terms, um, and we're always looking for people coming up, coming up the ranks. Um, you know, if you would like to serve with our board and try to help promote some of these activities that Roz has just said, um, we've had a lot of growth in the last five years in Iowa, and we're pretty excited about it. Um, we, many nonprofit boards would prefer to meet in person, but in this modern era, and we've come through COVID, we're finding that remote meetings are, uh, can be effective as well. Um, and we so we have five members who are up for re- uh, for reappointment to the board. Um, I think everyone, uh, many of these have stood here, but I just want to, to point this out. Kim Anderson, I guess, Kim, would you stand again, please? Those of you, Scott Osborne, Scott Standing, Cindy McCullough, is running for another term. Denise O'Brien could not be here tonight. She had another meeting with Women Food and Agriculture Network and uh, Mark Shewitt from Cherokee. Um, so what we need to do, although all of these five have agreed to serve again, we need to take a motion to approve this slate of candidates and any of the members can make that motion. Jack? All right, do we have a second? For unanimous ballot, <laughs> say that five times. Unanimous ballot for these five board members. Is there a second? Gary, thank you. All right, those in favor of electing these five members for an additional term, please vote aye. And those opposed, nay. Thanks. You weren't going to kick them off. Thank you very much. It's a small amount of business we actually need to do, but, but it is important to have this guidance um, for our staff. So I don't know where we are on lights. Could, could we have the lights up? I want to introduce Angela Tedesco, our first speaker for this evening. So I'm, I'm really excited to have Angela here this evening. Um, I've enjoyed getting to know Angela over the last 20 years in Iowa, and if I remember right, Angela's an Oklahoma native, made her way to Iowa, and um, you were a chemistry major originally, you didn't really think about farming, although you're from a farm in Oklahoma. 